airing each Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., and replaying Thursday night, 11 p.m. to uh, to 1 a.m. And so um, uh, Ben Horowitz and Gaylor Windsor from the March for Your Lives event uh, are with us this morning. And uh, hello, guys. How are you this morning? We're very good. Thanks for having us. All Thanks right. for having us. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's just take a moment and talk a little bit about the event. Um, how meaningful was that? I mean, the die-in and uh, hallelujah, uh, Alexis Jinx uh, welcoming us, a past guest on my show, and you guys performing, and uh, everybody just uh, you know really excited to be there, and uh, hopefully. Um, creating a meaningful and impactful change. Uh, what was it like for you guys? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think for both of us, it was definitely one of the most meaningful uh, events of our lives um, to see that many people from our hometown come out and support us uh, in an event uh, totally organized, wholly organized by young people. It was really amazing. Um, you know, I personally, I felt uh, really supported by my community. Um, just amazing to see adults and young people alike coming out uh, to say that enough is enough. You know, kids c need to stop dying. We need to stop giving assault rifles to people. Um, we need to stop making it so easy for people to get these guns. Um, and yeah, we need we need change. How about you, Ben? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was amazing because we we didn't have any idea of how many people are going to show up and the kind of energy that we would get and we'd just been having these you know pizza party meetings with 30 people right <laughs> just trying to figure it out and then we show up and there's 3,000 people and it's like well okay yeah, <laughs> it was amazing yeah. um, all, all the things that we had we had planned were really communal and we're trying to we were playing we were really hoping we could get as many people there as possible and so we did so on something like hallelujah it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty meaningful and amazing to have uh, 3,000 people singing along to the chorus of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Like that was, that was, that was pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. To give you an idea of how shocked we were, um, at the number of people we, Ben and Cheryl and I were standing up at city hall and we were watching everyone come in and, uh, you know, we, we had planned to have Flixus Jinx play like three songs, you know, because we, we figured that'd be enough time <laughs> for all the people to kind of come in. Yeah. And we kept looking up Main Street and just the march just kept coming and kept coming. We're like, Move. sing more songs, guys. Yeah, and right. like, we don't have any more songs. And they had to do repeats. It, it was incredible. Yeah, it was truly really like, incredible. Move to the right. Move yeah, exactly, to the right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. Crowded in by the Pulaski Park area. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were great. You know, they, they were uh, guests on my show a couple of weeks ago and they've been on in the past. And, uh, um, you know, uh, really uh, uh, up and coming, uh, really young, talented band from, you know, Pioneer Valley Performing Arts. And uh, yeah, I'm wonderful. so happy that they were a part of that. And, you know, so many young people and, and you guys all running it. I mean, that was the important part, you know. Mm, totally. Yeah. No, yeah, people like Ben and Cheryl and put hours and hours and hours and hours into this march. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, they we should have done a little more of our homework then. <laughs> right, right. Well, probably I, a bit oh, behind on their classes. Hopefully, at this your point, teachers <laughs> gave you a pass for yeah. uh, such a such a meaningful event. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, I teach in a middle school down in Springfield. Nice. We all uh, walked out, you know, the prior mm -hmm. week, and uh, you know, it's just it's a national movement. Enough is enough, and it's about you know. Uh, lives of uh, young people mm -hmm. and it's so important and obviously we've been failed mm -hmm. by our uh, you know the powers that be they mm -hmm. just haven't gotten it done they've been taking half of them have been taking uh, you know blood money really you know money mm -hmm. from the uh, yeah. NRA so uh, totally. it's so important I mean it's not just refreshing and exciting it's important and it's it's a life or death, death issue and obviously mm -hmm. you guys took it that way now now time is short so uh, you've got some songs Heck How about yeah. if we do you want to introduce? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ben, do you want to introduce uh, the first song? And that is, uh, uh, what did you, what did you learn in school today? Correct. Yeah. So um, so a lot of us um, in the past year since the 2016 election have been kind of diving into um, diving into the music of the civil rights movement. Ah, sorry. What is that? Um, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, but on the <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, this song is is a satirical song, really um, by uh, well, we heard it recorded by Pete Seeger, um, and 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 it's and it's from a child's perspective. So we thought it'd be a perfect song to kick off um, um, to expose the absurdity of the situation that we're in. Mm. All right, sounds good, guys. What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? 
I learned that Washington never told a lie. I learned that soldiers seldom die. I learned that everybody's free. And that's, that's what the teacher said to me. That's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that policemen are my friends. I learned that justice never ends. I learned that murderers pay for their crimes. Even if we make a mistake sometimes. And that's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. What did you learn in school today, dear little child of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that war is not so bad I learned about the great ones that we had We fought in Germany and in France And someday I might get my chance And that's what I learned in school today That's what I learned in school What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned our government must be strong It's always right and never wrong Our leaders are the finest men And we elect them again and again And that's what I learned in school today That's what I learned in school What did you learn in school today, dear little child of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned CPR and how to hide For what our founders fought and died Life, liberty, and the NRA We need a cheap AK today <laughs> That's what I learned in school today That's what I learned in school What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned our government keeps us safe by teaching us children to stay in place. Letting us buy a weapon of war, our face grade teacher will shoot the door. And that's what I learned in school today, that's what I learned in school. Uh, what did you learn in school today, dear little child of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? But maybe we need a little more Arm each student at the school front door Wear body armor in the very first grade Or we could just say no to the NRA Well... That's what I learned in school today That's what I learned in school <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, this whole... Uh, you know, body armor or, um, I mean, how, how ludicrous. Could you imagine um, teachers around the school with weapons and, you know, the stress that teachers go through in, you know, teaching through the course of the year? I mean, didn't, didn't, wasn't there a teacher who um, had a license to carry somewhere in the country, but he got, like, stressed out and, like, shot up the gymnasium just, like, a couple of weeks ago? I mean, what do you think of that? Yeah, well, I haven't heard about that, but I, you know, I definitely, I heard about uh, one story in which uh, it was actually a resource officer who was, you know, uh, demonstrating how to use a firearm and ended up, you know, discharging it at the ceiling while he was trying to disload, you know, un unload it and then uh, ended up injuring a student. He didn't shoot a student, but um, injured a student pretty badly, and yeah, I think people just don't realize how dangerous these weapons are and even, you know, and, and, and how humans are, you know, uh, we, you know, depending on what mood you're in, you know, you're not necessarily <laughs> stable to, you know, people like, uh, I think having a, a weapon that so easily kills and, and hurts people uh, is really dangerous, especially in the hands of people that aren't so stable. Um, and we can't always know who's stable good, and who's Good not. point. No one needs mass weapons of destruction. Yeah. No one needs yeah. these mass weapons of war. No one needs military-grade weapons. Humans aren't meant to have this kind of power. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah or like yeah, everyday yeah, citizens aren't allowed. You know, like yeah. I, I, you know I, I think obviously... Yeah. But yeah. that's, that's reserved for the military. I mean, you know, like, yeah. th these weapons are designed to kill people. In AR-15, it's designed to kill someone. In the most brutal and right. maximally damaging way. Exactly. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, I noticed that uh, there was a, a voter registration table mm. at the event. Yeah. And how important is that? I mean, super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the number one it. way we can yeah. amplify our voice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, young people are, are voting in low numbers, and what I've, what I've been trying to say is that is that it's not the worst thing in the world because it means that we're at, underestimated. <laughs> so yeah, our yeah, generation sure is thing. greatly underestimated. And so our, what we're trying to do is the organizers are trying to get rid of the space between students and voting as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So so we're hoping to swing the the, the midterms. <laughs> and there are there are so Absolutely. many so many people in our generation who are so uh, you know disillusioned with our political system. And I think organizing marches like this and making as many students as possible have their voices heard is really, really important because it shows that we do have power and that we do have the ability to make change. 
And that's super important if we want change. Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk about disillusionment. I mean, um, it seems as though, you know, bullying and uh, estrangement, mm. you know, of kids who maybe are on the fringe can lead down to, you know, depending on obviously access to weapons or yeah. whatever's going on down yeah. a, a very dangerous path. So um, it seems like, you know, the inclusion, uh, you know, and, mm -hmm. and bringing people in and yeah. having them engaged and involved in the system. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of apathy out there and yeah. you certainly don't want it among, you know, your ranks. Yeah, and this, this is a very intersectional issue in that, you know, it's not just banning assault assault weapons. It's not just creating background checks and red flag laws. It's also, you know, improving education and you know improving uh, our school environments so that kids like Nicholas Cruz don't you know end up um, you know uh, ignored by the school system and you know kids like that get help uh, so that they don't they don't end up with the ability to shoot up a school and you know commit mass murder. Yeah. 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 Did you want to say something about that, Ben? Yeah, and also in the meantime, so that Nicholas Cruz can't walk into a, a Walmart and buy a gun. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, not have so access So there's so to many it. layers to this. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I want to say that uh, if you just tuned in, uh, we're speaking with Ben Moss Horowitz, a junior at Northampton High School, and Galen Windsor, a senior at the high school, and uh, they were a part of the uh, uh, March for Your Lives movement, uh, organizing it, performing, uh, which took place in downtown Northampton. And uh, certainly it was a national movement. And also, uh, this is WXOJ 103.3 FM Northampton. And we're streaming online at valleyfreeradio.org. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And... Um, Caroline is uh, is uh, observing, so thank you for being here, Caroline, as well. And so uh, looks like we, uh, we're going to move on to the, will it be the uh, Hallelujah uh, tribute song? Yeah, so we're going to play a uh, tribute that Ben and I played at the uh, and sang and, and spoke at the uh, March for Our Lives in downtown Northampton. Uh, ben had the really wonderful idea to use the song Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, um, it really just, I think, you know, we both agree, and I think many people agree that it really just speaks to a lot of what's going on right now in the world. And um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, great, great choice. It was uh, so powerful. Thank you. Really yeah. moving. Thank and uh, yeah. Yes. Well, and it's great for singing along. So if you're singing yeah, at yeah. home, <laughs> that's join right. us on the chorus for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I heard there was a secret chord We could sing out loud So we're not ignored But you just started listening to us Well it goes like this We march, we sing, we make our calls Let freedom ring And when it's done we've got is hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Scott Beagle, 35, was a geography teacher and the school's cross-country coach. While opening the door for students to hide, he was shot and killed. Joaquin Oliver, a senior, moved to the United States from Venezuela when he was three years old and became a U.S. citizen last year. He was buried in a Dwayne Wade jersey, honoring his love of basketball. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Feist, the assistant football coach who had played at Stonehead Douglas himself, raced to the scene and dove in front of three girls being shot at. Helena Ramsey, 17, was smart and warm. When the shooter started firing through the window of her Holocaust class, she said to her friend, grab a book. The book blocked the bullets and saved her friend's life.
Alyssa Alhadef, a freshman, played soccer since she was three years old. This year, she had just won a debate championship. And Nicholas Dwaret was a senior known as the swim team daddy for his supportive role as captain on the swim team. This season, he went from the middle of the pack to leading the team. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Martin Dugway Aguiano was a freshman. His brother Miguel wrote, He was sweet and caring and loved by all his family. Most of all, he was my baby brother. Jamie Guttenberg, a freshman, loved to dance and snuggle with her dog. Her dad wrote, I am broken as I write this, trying to figure out how my family gets through this. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Kara Luran, 14, loved the beach and Irish dancing. As her aunt wrote, while your thoughts are appreciated, I beg you to do something. And Chris Hickson, 49 years old, was the beloved wrestling coach and athletic director. He was described as a great man with a great sense of humor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Luke Hoyer was a huge NBA fan. At his funeral, his sister described his wide smile, his sense of humor, and his one true love, chicken nuggets. <laughs> and Gina Montalto, a freshman, was the member of the school's winter color guard. Those who knew her said she brightened any room she entered. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Elena Petty, a freshman, was a junior reserves training officer, an actor member of her church. She helped to clean up the Florida Keys after Hurricane Irma. And Meadow Pollack was a senior known for being confident and sassy. Her dad described her as his princess and the love of his life. She was planning to attend Lynn University. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Alex Schachter, freshman, played trombone in the marching band and, and basketball. His brother wore his number five Parkland Basketball Club jersey at a Miami Heat basketball ceremony in his honor. Carmen Shentrup, 16, was described as witty, intelligent, and incredibly sweet. A responsible hard worker, Carmen's National Merit Finalist letter arrived on the day she was murdered. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Peter Wang, just 15 years old, dreamed of attending the United States Military Academy. Peter died wearing his re Junior Reserves Officer's Training Corps uniform while holding the door open for his fellow students and staff to escape. Every day, children are shot and killed. Just this past Sunday, Stephen Clark, 22, received 
seven rounds of bullets when the police mistook his iPhone for his gun. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow, thank you so much, man. So, um, it is, um, it's important what you brought up um, in the last line as well. You know, the uh, uh, shooting of uh, unarmed African Americans mm. in our country uh, is, uh, you know, rampantly out of control and um, um, shooting, it's violence, you know, I mean, we're the most, yeah, violent uh, <laughs> uh, industrialized country in the world. And, um, you know, we've done nothing about that. So uh, this is, you know, enough is enough. Your movement is uh, oh so powerful and Thank so you. very important. So uh, what's the next step for you guys? You know, where, uh, where, do, you, where do you go from here? I think I'll let Ben ask, uh, answer that question. He's, he's more of in the organizing department. So. <laughs> yeah, so sure what's, what's happened after, as an after effect to this march yeah. is that all the organizers, so we had organizers around 15 schools. They were really their walkout organizers. Um, and some even some kids from marches like the March in Springfield and the March in Pittsfield. We're all coming together and we've given ourselves a made up name, Pioneer Valley Students for Gun Control. And, um, and we're gonna start meeting uh, very soon with, with our adult allies as well um, to, try to, to try to plan next steps. So we're advocating for early risk protective orders um, um, on the state level. We're hoping to have a lobby day at the Mass State House. Um, and we got, around, we got around 500 signatures uh, for that at our march. Um, but also, I, but also, I think we're. I think that we could really move it any direction at this point. Um, I think we're going to attack uh, gun violence from uh, every angle, and and you can donate uh, to us at uh, um, Pioneer Valley Students for Gun Control. Um, we have a GoFundMe, um, and that's been really helpful, and that's allowed us to get connected and get resources. So um, Pioneer Valley Students, students for, for Gun, gun Control dot org, right? Uh, PV for Gun Control dot oh, org. Um, and yeah, we're we have a massive email chain with like 800 people, and um, so I'm excited to see what happens. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, that's uh, excellent. You know, so important. And obviously, you know, we talked about the, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting registered and uh, getting people registered and yep. and getting uh, these people out of office who have uh, failed us. Yep. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. um, so that's uh, that's so important as well. Um, so uh, let's see. We've got. Uh, you guys have another song, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I'm gone. We have, yes. Yeah. Our final. Yeah. Our final song is uh, "When I'm Gone" by <laughs> Phil Oaks. Um, I, I thought it was a good ending because it's uh, it, it both it both it both talks about death and and but but it's a, it's a call to action. Yeah. Um, from the Vietnam era. Fantastic. All right, Pioneer Valley students for gun control, and uh, we're going to close it out with uh, "When I'm Gone." Thank you. There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone You won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here And I won't feel the flowing of the time when I'm gone and all the pleasures of love will not be mine when I'm gone My pen won't pour out a lyric line when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while, while I'm here. here And I won't breathe the bracing air when I'm gone And I can't even worry about my cares when I'm gone won't be asked to do my share when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here And I won't be running from the rain when I'm gone And I can't even suffer from the pain when I'm gone Can't say who's to praise and who's to blame when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here won't see the golden of the sun when I'm gone 
And the evenings and the mornings will be one when I'm gone Can't be singing louder than the guns when I'm gone So I guess I'll, I'll have, have to do it while I'm here And all my days won't be dances of delight when I'm gone And the chances will be shifting from my sight when I'm gone Can't add my name unto the fight while I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here And I won't be laughing at the lies when I'm gone And I can't question how or when or why when I'm gone Can't live proud enough to die when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone And I can know the right from the wrong when I'm gone You won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. All right. Fantastic. That was so wonderful. Um, yeah, it's such a, such a thrill to have you guys here today. You know? Thanks for having us. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, yeah, Thank sure. You. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll come back and keep my listeners in touch with your movement. It's Absolutely. really so important to me, you know, as mm -hmm. a parent of, uh, you know, kids a little bit older than you and younger than you and a school teacher, you know, as well. Yeah. And so we're where it's at. You know, my kids are scared, you know, middle school kids, you know, we've, uh, you know, we had a, around this time of the, uh, I think just before the march, uh, there was a, uh, you know, bomb threat at our school and, you know, yeah. and kids were terrified and yeah. about a third of the population didn't show up that day. I don't blame them at all, <laughs> you know, and uh, we had to do a lot of, uh, kind of uh, on the spot kind of counseling and reassurance and mm -hmm. really having the conversation about, you know, the NRA and gun control and, and all that with mm -hmm. uh, kids who were, you know, uh, 12, you know, 12, 13, 14 year old, you yeah. know, 14 years old. It's not a, it's not a good learning environment. That's for sure. <laughs> When, yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're constantly having to do lockdown drills and, and, uh, And, you know, and yeah, we've, we've had bomb threats, like several in my career. I, I'm yeah. a senior now and I've yeah. had like at least three while I'm, while I've been there. And that's just ridiculous. Yeah. We're the mass shooting yeah. generation. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we've grown up with. Yeah. The fear we've lived with. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to, uh, shift it uh, up. stamp that out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Turn, uh, turn it around, uh, once and for all, right. Yes, enough absolutely. is enough. Exactly. So, um, thank you so much. Uh, to uh, Ben Moss Horowitz and uh, Galen Windsor, look forward to having you guys. Uh, look forward to having you guys back. 